we have to finish putting the binding around this replacement part of the fretboard. Uh, before that, I'm just going to sand it so that it's curved to the same 12 inch radius as the rest of the fretboard. So I can see this is all on the same plane. I've got the extension or the replacement part sanded down. The whole fretboard will get another going over before I put the the new frets in. But for now I just wanted to have this part pretty pretty even. So now I'll clean out the fret slots again and then we'll start doing the the binding and purfling lines. Okay, here goes the first piece. Just using cyano glue, super glue. This won't be under any kind of stress. And uh, this glue cures very quickly. of accelerator. So now I'll scrape this flush, cut the miter, and stick the end piece on. This piece. And the same thing. This one will get scraped off. I'll miter this corner and put in the last piece. Before the outer binding goes on, we need to extend the fret slots into these purfling lines, just like you can see it is everywhere else. So take care of that first. just using pull strokes because I don't want to take a chance on, on pushing the binding or breaking the, the glue joint. Okay, no fancy miter on this outer binding line. It'll just be a straight butt joint at the end. So I used a chisel and made sure that the original binding was square with a, a nice clean edge and I scraped all along this channel and I squared up the edge of the the new binding so now that will get glued on
Now obviously there's a huge color contrast between the brand new white binding and the 50 year old white binding or 40 whatever we decided. Um, so before the finish goes on the guitar we'll be doing something to stain the new bindings to make them look a little bit older. Okay, that's it. Endless binding scraping now. We have to make a truss rod wrench to fit that unusual design, so here goes. <laughs> 